Thank you for joining us in evening prayer. Our service will be following the Anglican Book of Common Prayer 2019, and we will begin our service on page 41. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your honor dwells. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask, for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises, declared to all people, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O gladsome light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. We will turn now to page 284 and join in Psalm 17 together. Hear what is right, O Lord. Consider my complaint. Hearken to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let justice for me come forth from your presence and let your eyes look upon that which is right. You have tested and visited my heart in the night season. If you try me, you shall find no wickedness in me. My mouth shall not offend. As for the works of others, because of the words of your lips, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent. Hold my steps firmly in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, O God, for you will hear me. Incline your ear to me, and hearken to my words. Show your marvelous loving kindness, that you are the Savior of those who put their trust in you. You from the ones who resist your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. 
Hide me under the shadow of your wings, from the ungodly who assault me, even from my enemies who encompass me to take away my soul. They have closed their heart to pity, and their mouth speaks proud things. They lie waiting in my way on every side, watching how they may cast me down to the ground. Like a lion that is greedy for its prey, and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Rise up, O Lord, confront them and cast them down. Deliver my soul from the ungodly by your sword and by your hand. From those, O Lord, from whom, from those whose portion in life is of the world, those bellies you fill with your hidden treasure. They have children at their desire, and leave the rest of their abundance for their little ones. But as for me, I will behold your presence in righteousness, and when I awake and see your likeness, I shall be satisfied. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Job, chapter 19, starting in the 23rd verse. Job replied, Oh, that my words were written! Oh, that they were inscribed in a book! Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever! For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes will be shall behold, and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first cantle, canticle is on page 86, the Deus Miserator. May God be merciful unto us, and bless us, and show us the light of his countenance, and be merciful unto us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Indeed, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you shall judge the peoples righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, even our own God, shall give us his blessing. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the world shall fear him. Our second reading is from the book, uh, the letter of uh, 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, starting in verse 13. But we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the firstfruits to be saved, through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Finally, brothers, pray for us, that the word of the Lord may speed ahead and be honored, as happened among you, and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord about you, that you are doing and will do the things that we command. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle is on page 46, the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation 
which you have prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our third reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 20, starting in the 27th verse. There came to Jesus some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, having a wife but no children, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children, and the second and the third took her, and likewise all seven left no children and died. Afterward, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had her as wife. And Jesus said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. For they cannot die any more, because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the bush, where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We resume with the Apostles' Creed on page 46. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Turning to the next page, we continue. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill, we entreat you, O Lord that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses, we entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and in the whole world, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ, we entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ, we entreat you, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you, and wake up in your likeness, for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, 
and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those on our ongoing prayer list. Fred, Heather, Ernie, Lori, Al, Jerry, Lisa, Jamie, Elizabeth, Nancy, Jason and Angie, Rusty, Martha, Barb, Jen, Anne, Kirsten, Gladys, John, Connie, Wayne, Edward, Robert, Anna, Glenn, Jared, Rhiannon, Tom, Debbie, Rose, James, Barry and Diane, Brian, Carrie, Mary Ellen, Andrea, Hetty, Bruce, Jonathan, Thomas, Kim, Eric, James, Jacob, Chris, Joe, Jean, Baxter, Richard, Jackson, Hilda, Keba, Mark, Arlen, Nancy, Carlos, Brian, Mignon, Bob and Sharon, Chris, Deborah, Jeremy, Trevor, and the Shockley family. And we lift up to you Paul and Eric who are on hospice. We ask that your grace be upon them, that they may feel your comfort and guidance, and that those uh, who have needs, that they may be met according to your divine will. And we lift them up to you in Christ's name. Amen. If you have other intercessions or thanksgivings, feel free to lift them up now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the chance to lift these prayers up to you, to raise our concerns to you and know that they are heard and that they will be addressed. We thank you for the rains and for the restoring of uh, Portland's greenery. We ask, though, Lord, that those who are suffering through this rain, whether it be through unstable housing or through lack of housing, that they may be uh, sheltered, comfortable, and warm as we enter into this winter season. And we ask that your grace falls upon our city, that we may have clear guidance and comfort for one another, as well as direction for how we can assist one another and work towards your glory. And we lift our prayers up to you, spoken and unspoken. In Christ's name, amen. We resume on page 51. Together we say, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.